Yo, day. Hey, it's me. What do you mean? The guy from the Amtrak. You know I know you. Let, let us say it together. Schenectady. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. I'm so happy that you, uh, you know, that you uh, you made it into some university. What, what was it? I forgot which one it was. I mean, I, it's, it's in some message someplace. I got two phones now. I don't know. Because when I recorded you before, I think I recorded you on my camera phone. Remember my camera, a regular Canon camera. And then what happened? What happened? Oh, I was down at this uh, the, this thing at, in Washington, D.C., this, you know, the, the African-American museum experience, whatever I had with this poetry festival. And I lost the camera down there. So now I record on my OnePlus. Oh, well, you know, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, I'm glad you called. I'm not call. I'm glad you wrote the thing. I'm glad you got into university. I don't know which one you got. I forgot. Was it Harvard? Yale? One of those like that, right? Was Ivy League ones? Oh, yeah, yeah, nice, 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 nice. nice. But the hey, you know. But I have some advice for you, I think. I think. Now that you, now that you, you know, there we go. Okay. Let me see. What, where, where, where's the device? The device? Where's the advice at? First of all, I'm really happy that you did, you know, you, you're still, you know, doing what you're doing because, you know, you're going to be a fantastic uh, uh, photographer. Well, you are a fantastic photographer. In fact, did I ever tell you since you, since you are of Indian lineage, let me tell you about a photographer I met in India, right? I, I, he was, well, when I met him, he was running this school. It's like this uh, way out in the, it was way away from, from, from Delhi, you know, from, you know, old Delhi, new Delhi, way, way, I mean, it takes some, take the camel, not that camel. That take a long way, actually two hours, whatever it is. But it's, it's isolated area. He was doing this educational program. He was running a thing where, um, I think it's on my website someplace. Maybe I'll put the URL, get the whole story, but I think his name is Dev. But he was a professional photographer. That's how he started. And then he just, when he was going home, home one time, he saw these street kids, you know, just hanging out. So he would just hang out with them. That's all. And after a while, he, he bought this building for them. And, you know, he taught them basically stuff like, you know, uh, bought this building. They did, then they developed and finally got this other property. And now he, he was teaching them um, a welding, you know, sort of crafts like that. It was like a school basically for, you know, street kids, I guess, you know. So I'm not saying that's going to be your career, but I'm just saying he started as a photographer. You never can tell. Um, in fact, if you're going to be fine, can I give you some academic advice, okay? I know you don't know this, but I'm, I'm, I, I sort of know the academic world. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing goggles because, you know, the latest thing with this COVID, you know, with the, you know Fauci, right? You know, Dr. Fauci, <laughs> all them doctors there, they're all administrators, right? If you want to get something, you talk to the researchers, you know, we talk to doctors on the ground as we patients, whatever, however, what they say, you should wear goggles. Now they say wear goggles. Oh, please. You know what I mean? You know, so I'm, these, these goggles, my, uh, my brother, my brother, uh, my, my brother, he just passed, but he, he's one of his possessions. So I just, I got it. So I got goggles now. You know what I mean? It's really interesting how things happen. At any rate, what I'm trying to say, um, well, what I am going to tell you is that there's certainly, since you're a photographer, here's your thing. First of all, um, Always take a semester abroad, or I mean, a whole year abroad, you know, but go someplace that's not your native language. I mean, you know what I mean? You can speak English very well. Maybe you should go to a country that does French, you know what I mean? You know, Spanish is like that. Uh, I would say French if you're going to deal, but that's, that's just me, whatever your proclivities. So you're going to take a semester abroad or a semester away from your school, from your whatever, then do it like, maybe it's like, like go to Germany. If you're going to do photography, that's right. They do, they got the cameras, right? L learn lenses and stuff, do some internship that you gotta do some lens, learn about lenses or something like that. So, you know, you understand what I'm saying. But, okay, that's my little advice for photography. I know nothing about photography, but you know, that is. Okay, now, here's the thing though. Regardless, you are going to uh, be, you know, I mean, I don't know how old you are now, but I guess you're under 22. But this thing I have to tell you is called the, the Rosicrucian cycles, you know, of things, of, 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 of development, right? And there's this whole thing that I, I, I have I read it out here. Uh, one one to nine is your spirit. One to nine is your spiritual growth, right? Well, I should say, uh, um, but minus nine months to nine years old is your spiritual growth. So you know, you start like that, and then oh, not spiritual growth, your physical growth. So all of a sudden, nine years old, you're like that. So it's like that's that's the optimum time for your phys physical growth, right? Then uh, uh, basically, ten to eighteen is your mental growth. You know what I mean? That's where all of a sudden you say, hey, wait a second, you know, you're like eleven years old, ten years old. You say, hey, but you told me. The, the Easter money do the basic. No, no, no. So you're so you're, you're challenging things, right? Like that. Now, I'm assuming you're over 18. So nine, 19 to 27, that's that's the optimum time for your, for your sexual growth. It doesn't mean that you wasn't boinking at 10 years old or something like that. It just means that that's the optimum time, right? And then from uh, uh, 27 to like uh, 36 is your spiritual growth, okay? 
again, this doesn't mean that you wasn't a lay preacher, at, you know, at, at, you know at, at 13 years old. It just means this is the optimum time for these things, right? Now, I'm just going to focus on this, and then it repeats itself. Then basically from 37 to 45, it's just physical growth. That's where you see, that's why you get these bodybuilders, like, like 39, 40 years old, they, 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 yeah, they're bodybuilders, right? And then from uh, for 40, uh, 46 to 54 is your mental cycle again, your mental opportunity, uh, your mental growth again. And that's where you have like, a, lot of your, a lot of your CEOs, successful businessmen, whatever happened. Then uh, 55 to 63 is again, is your sexual cycle again. Again, it's the optimal time. That's when that's when all those guys turn in their turn in their wives for like your trophy girls and whatever where they you know running the women or whatever it is. Okay, then from 63 to 30, 72 is back to your spiritual growth again. And then it repeats itself again. Then 73 to 81, 82 to 90, 91 to 99, 100 to 108. Okay, don't worry about that part. Let's go back to the optimum time that you're in right now, your sexual growth. Now, here's the thing. This is so funny to me. Okay. When they, <laughs> oh man, college campuses, it's a time you, you do all kinds of things. You wow. You know, but if you don't do it now, you ain't never going to do it, right? I'm not, I'm not saying telling you to be promiscuous or something like that. I'm just trying to say this is a lot of sexual energy. That's why they recruit you in the army. All the companies want you now because you've got all this energy. Sexual energy is the strongest, strong, strong, strong energy. All right? So what happens is, you know, when you do, you're doing all these wild things, girls, you know, like for instance, you know, you, you, uh, you say for instance, some, some girl, you know, she's this first time she's away from home. She's at school or whatever. You know, 18 or whatever it's, you know, 17, 18, 19, whatever it is. So she's never been away from home. Now she's at home. All those things they say not to do, all of a sudden, you know, you're at your, with a bunch of other people have all this sexual energy and they've been they've been sequestered with their parents all this time. And now they're like, hey, freedom. <laughs> I can relate. Let me tell you, let me tell you what happens in South Africa. Let me explain this to you. This, this, maybe you understand this way. They have this thing in, in South Africa where like they say you can't drink till you're 18 something like that so they have these commercials on tv say you know that would tell you know they have the sexy lifestyle you know with, with joe bird lifestyle or whatever have you and then what happens is you know that then you so from, from the time you're like three years old until you're 18 you keep on hearing this message you know blah 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 but you know to drink responsibly don't you got to be 18 before you do this or something like that okay okay great so, so what happens when you get 18 the first thing you're going to do is like hey you <laughs> see how this works, you know? They got you. They got us coming and going. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that don't believe the hype. When they tell you that you're not supposed to do, don't do that, I don't know what to do. Just go do what you want. But you're mature enough. You know what to do. Um, so I just had to put that out there because because a lot of people get confused with that. That's why it's so stupid when they try to make laws about, you know, they, they just don't know, you know, because in this society, or in this society, I mean American society or Western society, whatever you want to call it, they compartmentalize things so much that you can't see beyond that compartment. And I'm, let me give you a tiny, 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 tiny story. Right? I was uh, on a bus one time uh, going from uh, King Williamstown to, to Alice, you know, where I live in, in, in South Africa. And uh, and this guy was talking, because they owe they me, I'm the old guy. They, they call me professor, you know, but whatever. So, so I'm, so I'm on, on the taxi, the conveyance, you know, going, and the guy's talking to me, I'm talking back and forth. And at some particular point, he said, you're a socialist. And I said, no, I'm an Anthony. What it means is that don't let these people label you with conservative, uh, radical, uh, progressive, uh, I don't know, whatever, you know, the greedy, whatever it is, you know. You have... You're all these things. You're, you're what you you're, you're what you've been exposed to. Because remember, you know you you had an extraordinary thing. You know, just to hang out with with, uh, with the squatters and stuff like that. No, there's a lot of people that's not going to have that experience that you're going to be around with these next next few years. And also remember, come on, that's part of one of the reasons why you got into the university, right? Because you had a different experience. You know, so you just got to keep on going. And I'm, I'm sure that you're going to be yourself. So I'm confident you're going to be on it, right? Now, back to the, the, the thing about the suits and all the rest of that stuff. Here you go. Okay, if you're in New York, here's the thing. Uh, okay, I have another little story. When I became arts director, the, 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 the signature job of whatever, whatever, of WBI Radio, so I was dressing like this, just, you know, t-shirts and stuff like that. And then this, this woman, you know, one of the volunteers, uh, Karen Opendorf, bless her soul, she said, said, Anthony, look, you know, you're, you're in position, you're, you're in a position now, you have to, you have to change your wardrobe. She said, you go, I want to take you around, get clothes for you. I said, I said, okay, fine, you know, I'm cooperative, right? So she says, first thing she says, she says, any old schmuck 
can take a thousand dollars and go to Barney's and buy clothes. That's nothing. It takes a real, you know, a real person that knows something to go to thrift shops. So she took me to thrift shops in New Jersey, all over New York. Man, I had a thousand dollar Armani's. This is back in the early nineties. This is not, yeah, nineteen ninety. 91, whatever it was. Yeah, 19, early 90s. Had it like a $1,000 Armani suit. I mean, I got t t t all kinds of stuff, you know what I mean? Like that. Um, but one of the things I got was um, uh, shoes. You know, you got to get some decent shoes. Remember, remember we said shoes, a suit, right? And a watch, right? Okay, you know that. Okay, I know the hat thing. Don't worry about the hat. Honey. You be talking about Wow, you, 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 you said what you said about the hat. Like you should have one hat somewhere in your travels. You, you know, get one of those Australian hats or something. You know what I'm saying. Okay. So, so that's what, but here's the trick. She said, in these thrift shops, what happens? Say, say, some, say some kid has a bar mitzvah, right? And he buys these shoes, you know, for the bar mitzvah. He wears it one time. This boy is, you know, but he, he's like 13, 14 years old, whatever the age is. But he had big feet, right? So when I went there, I got these really nice shoes. I've been worn one time because, you know, they do their little thing and then they put the shoes in the closet and then years later the mother just oh, and throw it, gets it to the thrift shop. You see what I'm saying? Well, now, here's the thing. So you go to thrift shop, thrift shop shopping, but then now it's sort of like a racket now, the salvation, but, you know, you know, there's some dodgy stuff happening there. Let me tell you what, I'll talk about my brother. Okay, my brother passed, he died. And uh, I had to clean out his storage, right? And so he, he had told me before he got a lot of his stuff from St. John Divine, you know, the cathedral there. John John Divine. And so I said, let me bring it back to them. So I brought it all back to him. He had some nice, but then again, my brother was, uh, you know, my whole family's like clothes made. I'm, I'm like, don't worry about it. But but they all into clothes. My brother was like fashion maven. Like he got some quality stuff. I remember he had this, he had this coat, this suede coat, like a trench coat, I, I this big coat, right? Like a Sherlock Holmes, you know, kind of coat, right? And it was like suede, it's a beautiful coat, right? He got a you know, homeless, he was homeless, you know. He got it from the, from, from St. John Divine, right? And that coat, and now here's, here's where I think, let me tell you, my fraternity, like, don't tell nobody this, okay? My fraternity brother, but me, you know, because he had the car, you know, so to get all this stuff and give it to St. John Divine, but get rid of the stuff, right? From his, from his storage space. And so, so buddy's going through his stuff. Hey, trying to find loot, you know what I mean? <laughs> Try this value, this, this value, like that. Okay, now I know my brother, he think like me. I know, I'm sure, in that coat, he had money, right? I per but he had it in a, you know, had the coat there in a, a, a you know, cleaner's bag over it like that. So I purposely did not go through that coat. You know, I put it into the thing with the rest of the, with the, rest of the clothes, right? The reason why I tell you this is because it's like pay it forward. You know what I mean? If somebody needs, somebody gets that coat, or well, maybe the staff goes to it and they get the money, it's fine, you know what I mean? But it wasn't mine, you know, he, I'm, all I'm trying to say is that you have to pay things forward. You know, you know about that stuff. Okay, so I'm suggesting that you go to St. John. I they got quality stuff. You don't. Know, you just go there and say, look, I'm not homeless, but I'm. A, I'm a, and remember, that's around Columbia University too. You know, that's the other thing. Go to a thrift shop around. You know, places like uh, where rich people, rich people. I got it. I guess I got, I got this shirt. This is I got it. On, I get it on back. I mean, inside out right now. But I got this really quality thing from a thrift store here. I'm in. I'm in Missouri right now, St. Louis, right? And. Uh, and you know, there's there's like two thrift shops. There's a thrift shop where the rich people put their stuff in, and but where like poor people. So we went to the rich people thrift shop. Sometimes they have even have the tags left on the thing. Very funny. Anyway, so it's like I said, because I'm I'm stuck here in the states. Oh, I don't even know this because of COVID. I can't go back to South Africa where I live. So I'm stuck here. I'm here. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm here. I, mean, I talked to my wife. He said, "Look, we're gonna make this like we're at war." And I'm I'm <laughs> I'm deployed for like 18 months. You know, I don't know what's gonna happen. Anyway, so I didn't have a lot of clothes. You know what I mean? And then I started. Anyway, so I, I had to get some 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 garments. So I did. So it's the same thing with you. That's what I'm trying to say. You have to know where you shop. And then and then the other thing is, if you go to some place like Saint John Divine, you cap your camera. And say, look, I want to do a story or whatever it is. Da, 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 da. I don't know. You. What I'm trying to say is, use your camera. Right. Better, better still use your your student status. You can go any place with your student status. You just go someplace, you know, some big time, say a photographer, like you know, or some lens place. Like I said, you study lenses. Like I say, look, I'm a, I'm a student at blah blah blah, you know, and I want a little more about lenses. Do you have an internship with it? Or can I hang out for whatever it is? And then let you hang out. Look, I'm gonna give you one more last thing. I've had a lot of interesting things happen in my life. You know, HD. You know, the HD thing first happened, right? Well. 
the, the, the first person they did with the HD cameras was Frank Sinatra, right? The second person was a guy named Dr. Kenneth Mills. Now, check this out, right? I was hanging out with Dr. Kenneth Mills at the time, right? And he knew all these people, whatever happened. And this studio was just up, and it was like lower Broadway, down the Wall Street area, you know, by by Sakati Park. Anyway, uh, so I was, I'm, you know, I'm a young looking kid, whatever it is. And so, um, and so, you know, I was there, and they, and I said, well, I was talking to them, and they let me hang out for like weeks. I could come, I could just come and just hang out with them, just see what they're doing like that. You could do the same thing. Anybody with a student card, you have no idea the power you have with a student card. So I don't know what students are like these days. I don't know if you're doing a virtual thing or you're going to be in classes. Da, da, da. Just enjoy yourself, right? And uh, hey, remember, you know, you're in, hey, don't, uh, are you going to fall in love, whatever have you done? Everybody going to fall in love. You know, I love you, man. I want to give you advice on that level. You must have uncles that you talk to. Don't, you know, look, if you talk, I'm not going to give you advice on that thing. All I'm trying to say is that, you know, you got, if you have godfathers and older men, you know, in your life that you should, that you trust, it's not going to, well, you know, then, you know, talk to them. Okay. So that's, that's my advice right now. And you can, you know, you can write me anytime. I'm talking to you now over the, over the thing only because I'm, I'm too lazy to, <laughs> to keep on writing you back. Oh gosh. So anyway, you take care, man. Good luck to you. I'm so glad that you're doing what you're doing and, you, you'll be very successful. I know. You know, I stay in touch every few months or something like that. This uh, I'm gonna stay. Oh, right now by nine o'clock, um, I'm, I'm I'm taking a train ride. I'm, I am going to book this. I'm definitely I'm going to take the train ride from uh, Chicago to uh, Chicago here, yeah, Chicago to I think Portland. Then I'm gonna try to t take this train through Canada. You know what I mean? If Canada will have Americans, I'm trying to get another train thing at the end of the year because I'm stuck here. So I'm I'm a train man. You you know I'm a train man. So I'm gonna take advantage. You know I mean it, it might be the only time in my life I kept this time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a train. Take a train. You take care, man. Later.